Project 150, Human Conductor. We'll use the same circuit as in the previous project, but instead of putting the ends of the jumper wires in water, we will touch them with our fingers. Now, depending on how moist your fingers are, you might need to wet them. I'm going to dunk them in water and then now I get a little bit of electric current flowing through the circuit. Your body is mostly water, at least 70% water, and so if conditions are just right, your fingers will complete the circuit and allow the light tunnel in this case to come on. Once again, sometimes they might be drier and they will have no effect on the electric current. But if you're sweating, for instance, you might be more likely to trigger them. I'm going to use my right fingers. Nope, nothing happens. But water is always useful for <laughs> wetting them and allowing your fingers to become part of the circuit. Allowing you to become part of the circuit. Project 151. Water completes the circuit. We will build this simple circuit and include the red and black jumper wires and then we will use a cup of water and place the ends of both jumper wires in the water. The white LED comes on. Like project 149, the water in this case completes the electric circuit when the ends of the jumper wires are in, in it. And then if you were to remove either one, the white LED will go out. I am not going to do this, but you could also try dissolving some salt in the water or using different liquids and see how the brightness of the LED changes. You could also replace the white LED with the color LED. Now don't drink any liquids that are used here. Project 152. You complete the circuit. We will use the preceding circuit, but instead of dunking the ends of the jumper wires in water, I will place my fingers between them. And because my fingers conduct electricity, the white LED may come on even though it is not bright in this case. It might be better to wet my fingers by dunking them in water and now we get a little bit more brightness from the white LED. My fingers are not perfect conductors but nonetheless they will conduct electricity even if the current flowing through them is minute. One more time. And there you have it. Project 153. Mirrors on a wall. This circuit is pretty complicated because the two mirrors are mounted in a vertical position. You have to put them on the holders, which will then be mounted on the springs to the base grid. And we have the photo transistor, white LED, and horn. Slide switch is already on. And now we have to adjust the mirrors just right so that they will reflect light from the white LED onto the phototransistor and sound the alarm. So I have to kind of like play around with these mirrors and sometimes the circuit can be temperamental. But it's extremely difficult to insert the holders onto the grid. Especially with the springs. So I'm just going to adjust them. Volume warning. There we go. When the light is reflected correctly, the mirror, the alarm will sound. Yep. And here they give you some advice on how to 
make sure that the circuit works correctly. The mirrors should also be clean. I don't clean them, but I should. Maybe that could make their performance a little bit better. You could also dim the room lights and look at where the reflected light is shining so that you can know how to align them. Project 154, color light box. We will assemble all four base grids in a vertical position on the main grid. And you will see that the battery holder is separate. It's not connected to any of the small grids. We are going to place the color LED on the battery holder and it should light up. To make this circuit more fun, we can place a piece of plain white paper over the top of the box and turn off the light. And can you observe the different color patterns? The three main colors, red, green, and blue. You can see them because the color LED actually has three smaller LEDs inside of it. One of them is red, another is green, and a third is blue. So it's a pretty neat light show. When you're done with the circuit, make sure that you take off the color LED since there's no switch for it and so that you do not drain and so that you don't drain the batteries. 155, color light box lens. We'll use the preceding circuit, but place the light diffuser over the color LED before inserting it on the battery. Just adjust it for best effects. And then we're going to place the piece of paper over the circuit and turn off the light. Like the previous project, you can see the red, green, and blue colors produced by the color LED. But they are now scattered due to the diffuser on top of the LED. And it seems like you can say at least yellow... And I think it's and like light blue because the colors, the main three colors seem to mix together briefly. You can like turn the knob if you want to. You can turn the diffuser. Now you have vertical stripes. Project 156, projector box. First, we will place the projector over the white LED. This is what the completed circuit should look like. It's like a tall box. And then we will put a piece of white paper, plain white paper, over the box. Turn off this light. And then we will turn on the slide switch. We should see a picture from the projector on the paper. And it's pretty clear. If you want to, you can adjust the image on the projector by turning the red knob. I'm not going to do all of them, but now we have flowers and the picture seems to enlarge itself as you move the paper further away from the circuit and then shrinks as you place it back on. I'll do one more. And here's the earth. I hope you enjoyed this light show. Project 157, mini overhead light. The principle of this project is very simple, and you'll see that the white LED 
is mounted in an inverted position. Note that all the pegs of the base grids face inward. And here's the diagram for that project. And then I will turn on the slide switch and the white LED will come on. You have a simple white overhead light. You could pretend that this is a ceiling light in a room in your house. Project 158, mini overhead lights. Using the preceding circuit, we're going to carefully insert the color LED, which is closest to me, parallel to the white LED in an inverted position. We'll use double snap wires to connect it and single snap wires to support it. And then we'll turn on the slide switch. And now we'll have two lights that come on. The white LED is on continuously, but the color LED blinks. So you could pretend that you have extra, an extra overhead light in this room, one that flashes to make the atmosphere more fancy. Project 159, floor to ceiling, break the beam. This is the last main project for Snap Circuits 3D Illumination. And we will use this circuit, which consists of a box formed by three of the base grids attached to the main one. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and the white LED in an inverted position shines right over the phototransistor creating a beam and if I stick my hand in that beam between the white LED and phototransistor tra an alarm will sound. Turn down your volume When light to the phototransistor is blocked, electrical resistance decreases to sound the alarm. There, I've done many circuits that use this principle, but all of them have had a horizontal light beam. This circuit has a vertical light beam, so that's what makes it very unique. You could put a small object in the box, but make sure it's out of the way of the light beam. And then if somebody else tried to grab it, possibly a sibling or friend, then they'll likely reach into the light beam and set the alarm off. Now here's a bonus. You can build these structures but they require additional snap circuits parts which are not included in this set but might be included in other kits that you might have. And you can use them and refer to snap, the snap circuits website for instructions and photos that tell you how to build these structures. Now when I tried to go on the website, the exact link on my phone, I could not find them. So I'm not sure if they still have the instructions up there. I got this Snap Circuits set three years ago. So I don't know if they still have it. I would hope that they do. But you could try look do you could at least do the best you can by referring to the pictures in the manual you can also purchase additional snap circuits parts at on the website and make sure that you refer to the do's and don'ts on page 8 of this manual when experimenting on your own with that said Thank you so much for watching the demonstrations of the projects of Snap Circuits 3D Illumination. I hope that you learned a lot from these projects.
and I wish you all a Merry Christmas.